This free step-by-step -step video comes to you directly from Haynes, creators of the world's best repair manuals. Fix your car or truck the right way with our accurate and reliable information at your side. You can complete more than 200 jobs on this vehicle when you purchase the complete online manual at Haynes.com. Water pumps replacement. Open the door and pull the hood release lever located on the driver's side kick panel. Slide the hood safety latch to the left, then raise the hood upwards. Drain the primary or secondary cooling system, depending on which thermostats are being replaced. Cooling system draining. Remove the primary expansion tank cap. Remove the secondary expansion tank cap. Move a large container under the radiator drain to catch the coolant. The drain valve is located on the lower left side of the radiator. Working from under the vehicle, loosen the drain valve by turning it counterclockwise using a pair of pliers. Once the valve is loosened, Open the drain and allow the coolant to drain into the drain pan. While the coolant is draining, check the condition of the radiator hoses, heater hoses, and clamps. Replace any damaged clamps or hoses. When the flow of coolant stops, tighten the drain plug securely. Since this diesel model is equipped with a dual cooling system, there are more areas at which to drain the coolant. With the drain container in position, remove the engine block drain plug at the right-hand side of the engine. Using a long Allen key with a socket base may prove to be the best method for reaching the plug. Once the flow of coolant stops, install and tighten the block drain plug to 44 foot-pounds. Dispose of the used coolant properly. Fan shroud and stator removal for access to both water pumps. Remove the air charge intake tube. Unclip the coolant lines from the air intake and resonator retainers. Disconnect the coolant reservoir line from the secondary radiator. Remove the bolts securing the secondary coolant reservoir to the fan shroud. Disconnect the electrical connector to the mass airflow sensor. Then loosen the intake tube clamps and remove the air filter housing top cover. Lift the secondary reservoir up and remove the intake air resonator assembly from under the reservoir lines and out of the vehicle. Disconnect the hoses and clamps to the secondary expansion tank hose. Rotate the expansion tank to access the quick connect hose fitting at the bottom of the tank then use pliers to squeeze the tabs and release the hose from the tank. Remove the tank from the vehicle. Unbolt and position aside the power steering pump reservoir, then remove the upper fan shroud retaining bolts. Remove the fan stator to shroud mounting nuts. Release any electrical harness retaining clips from the upper fan shroud. Remove the remaining upper fan shroud mounting bolts, then remove the upper fan shroud from the vehicle. Using a trim tool, release the coolant pipe retaining clip from the bracket and position aside the coolant pipe. 
Disconnect the camshaft position, CMP, sensor electrical connector, and also the fan electrical connector. Remove the electrical connector bracket bolt. Separate the bracket from the fan. Using a pair of special fan nut wrenches, unscrew the fan clutch from the clutch drive. The fan clutch nut is usually very tight. Fully unscrew and remove the fan assembly from the vehicle. Verify the four nuts are removed and all wiring harness or hose retaining clips have been detached. Slide the stator off of the studs and rotate the stator to clear the necessary components and remove the stator from the lower section of the fan shroud. Unclip the coolant lines from the air intake assembly retainers. Although not absolutely necessary, it may provide better clearance to disconnect the coolant reservoir line from the secondary radiator than reposition the lines aside. Be prepared for some coolant loss. Remove the bolt securing the air intake resonator. Remove the bolts securing the secondary coolant reservoir to the fan shroud. Disconnect the electrical connector to the mass airflow sensor, then loosen the air intake tube clamps and remove the air filter housing cover. Remove the air intake resonator assembly. Remove the bracket bolt for the electric fan clutch, then disconnect the electrical connector. Insert a 3 8 square drive ratchet or tensioner tool into the square on the tensioner. Then rotate the tensioner to release the belt tension and slide the belt off of an accessible pulley. Once the belt is loose, release the tensioner to its stopping point. Remove the belt from the engine. Primary water pump. Remove the drive belt tensioner mounting bolt and tensioner. Remove the cooling fan drive bracket bolts, then remove the assembly. Disconnect the sensor electrical connector and release the harness retainers from the area over the pump, then position the harness out of the way. Remove the idler pulley mounting bolt and pulley. Release the retaining clips securing the water pump coolant hoses. Disconnect the heater hose connection from the bottom of the lower radiator hose connector at the pump. Expect coolant loss when doing so. Disconnect the lower radiator hose. Remove the battery cable bracket bolts and nuts and then move the cable along with the bracket out of the way so that the lower water pump bolts can be accessed and removed. Remove the six large bolts and 12 small bolts around the perimeter of the pump, noting their positions. If necessary, use a screwdriver to pry against the tab on the pump to free the pump from the mounting surface, then remove the pump from the front cover. Do not pry against the mating surfaces or they may become distorted. Before installation, thoroughly clean off all debris from the gasket mating surfaces using a wire brush. Then use a rag saturated in brake cleaner to provide a final clean finish. Ensuring that the pump mating surface is clean, install a new gasket into the groove along the pump sealing surface. For reference purposes, here are the mounting bolt locations for the water pump. Apply a light film of coolant onto the pump o-ring, then install the pump on the engine and begin threading in the various mounting bolts into their proper locations until they are all hand tight.
Tighten the water pump mounting bolts evenly, a little at a time, to the specified torque settings, starting with the smaller bolts, then moving on to the larger bolts. Do not over tighten the pump bolts, doing so will crack or distort the housing. Install and securely tighten the battery cable bracket fasteners. Ensuring that the connections are clean, connect the lower radiator hose and also the heater hose connection to the connector below the water pump. Make sure the locking clips are engaged. Connect the sensor electrical connector and the harness retainers. Install the cooling fan drive bracket assembly and bolts. Tighten the cooling fan drive bracket bolts securely. Install the drive belt tensioner, making sure to align the dowel on the tensioner body with the hole in the housing. Tighten the drive belt tensioner mounting bolt to the specified torque setting. Install the idler pulley. Tighten the idler pulley bolt to the specified torque setting. Secondary water pump. Release the locking clip on the radiator hose connector and separate the hose from the pump. Expect coolant loss. Remove the secondary pump assembly mounting bolts evenly then remove the pump from the cylinder head. Release the locking clip on the remaining radiator hose connector and separate the hose from the pump. Clean the area on the inside of the radiator hose connection, then slide the spring clip inwards until it locks in place. Push the upper hose quick connect fitting onto the water pump, then install the water pump assembly to the cylinder head and thread in the mounting bolts. Tighten the water pump assembly mounting bolts to the specified torque setting. Push the lower hose quick connect fitting onto the water pump making sure it clicks into place. Remove the stator stud from the old pump assembly and transfer it to the new assembly. Tighten the stud securely. Fan shroud and stator installation. Install the belt loosely over the various pulleys. These belt routing diagrams indicate how the belt should be routed among the pulleys on single and dual alternator diesel models. Once the belt has been routed loosely among the pulleys, rotate the tensioner to allow the belt to be slipped onto the remaining pulley. When the belt is fitted around all the pulleys, release the tensioner to apply tension to the belt. Make sure the belt is engaged completely into the pulley grooves. Install the fan clutch bracket and tighten the bolt securely. Reconnect the fan clutch electrical connector. Install the intake air resonator and filter housing cover assembly. Connect the coolant hose to the secondary reservoir if it was disconnected. Secure and tighten all hose clamps. Install and tighten the mounting bolts for the intake assembly and also for the secondary coolant tank. Install the stator onto the mounting studs. Install the stator mounting nuts and tighten them securely. Install the fan clutch, rotating it clockwise by hand completely onto the stud. Using a pair of special wrenches, tighten the fan clutch hub to cooling fan drive nut to the specified torque setting.
Install and connect the cooling fan connector bracket at both ends, then tighten the mounting bolt securely. Install the upper fan shroud, attaching any harness retaining clips onto the shroud. Then install and tighten the mounting bolt securely. Also install and tighten the power steering reservoir bolt securely. Connect the quick connect fitting to the bottom of the secondary reservoir, then install the remaining lower hoses and secure them with the clamps. Install the reservoir onto the shroud and tighten the mounting bolts securely. Install the upper hoses and secure them with the clamps. Install the air charge tube, making sure an audible click is heard when the upper tube end is connected. Then connect the lower end of the tube and tighten the clamp securely. Connect the nearby electrical connector to the sensor. Lift up the secondary coolant reservoir hoses and install the intake air resonator assembly. Install the air filter housing top cover and connect it to the intake tube. Then connect the remaining resonator assembly ports. Tighten the clamps securely and connect the electrical connector to the mass airflow sensor. Also tighten the resonator assembly mounting bolts securely and double check that all hose clamps are secured and all harness clips are in place. Connect the cables to the negative battery terminals on both batteries and tighten the cable nuts securely. Refill the primary or secondary cooling system. Cooling system filling. Connect the cables to the negative battery terminals on both batteries and tighten the cable nuts securely. Place the heater temperature control in the maximum heat position. Place a piece of cardboard onto the driver's side of the radiator. This will help speed up the engine heating process. A suitable clamp can be used to hold the cardboard in place. Place a funnel in the primary expansion tank, then slowly fill the expansion tank with the correct mixture of antifreeze and water to the cold fill mark. Install the cap on the expansion tank until it clicks once, then loosen the cap a half a turn. The cap must not be sealed at this stage, to allow air to bleed from the system as necessary. Slowly fill the secondary expansion tank with the correct mixture of antifreeze and water to the max mark. Then install the cap onto the tank loosely as well. Start the engine and let it idle for a minute or two. Check the coolant level in both tanks and refill them as necessary to maintain them at the correct levels. Be sure again to place the caps loosely onto the tanks if removed. Increase the engine speed to approximately 2,000 RPM for 2 minutes. After 2 minutes at 2,000 RPM is complete, run the engine at idle until the primary thermostat opens. This can be known by feeling the upper radiator hose. If the hose is hot to the touch, the thermostat has opened. Once the thermostat opens, check and refill the coolant tanks as necessary to the maximum marks. The primary tank level should be about three quarters of an inch above the cold fill mark when the engine has heated up. Turn the engine off. Unclamp and remove the cardboard. Restart the engine again and allow it to idle for five minutes. Fill the coolant tanks again as necessary to maintain them at the maximum levels. Once both levels appear stabilized, Install the caps securely onto the tanks to provide a sufficient cooling system seal. Turn off the engine.